Hey, welcome back. I'm Jana with Pearl Together, and this week we're finishing up our Maya Cardigan Knit Along. This is a stranded color work knit along that we started way back Thanksgiving weekend. Finally, we're finishing it up. I'm going to show you how to pick up for the button band and knit that, make those buttonholes, and also I'll show you my method of sewing on the buttons. And then we'll weave in those last pesky little ends on the ribbing and be done. Yay! So, the, before we start with all that, I want to give a big public thank you to several new patrons that have joined the patron family in the last couple of weeks. That would be Julie, Zoe, Janet, Debbie, Nalita, Leslie, and Karen. Thanks so much for joining the Pearl Together patron family. If you want to learn how you can become a Pearl Together patron, head over to patreon.com forward slash Pearl Together, where you can see what I'm offering for small monthly pledges. All right, let's get started finishing up our cardigan. Okay, I finished the sweater. I have blocked it and woven in all the ends. So that's pretty awesome. You can see the steak right here, and this is the what I'm calling the target line, where I'm gonna do the crocheted reinforcement right next to that. So if you're curious about how this is gonna go, um, I do have a, a video that explains how we're gonna do the crochet reinforcement and I'll show you again here as well. So I have this fingering weight yarn. You wanna you want to use a, a yarn that's smaller than what you knitted your project in and a crochet hook that is correspondingly smaller as well. So here's my target line for my steak right here. We're gonna pick up the left leg of our target stitch and the right leg of the one next to it. So this is a little easier to see where it's not uh, that darker color. So we're going to pick up the left leg of this stitch in the center of the white one and the right leg of the gray one. And then on the other side, we're going to do the right leg of the white stitch and the left leg of the gray one. So the first thing I'm going to do is just tie a little uh, slip knot in the end of this. Um, I'm using a fingering weight that is 100% wool as well. And then I'm just going to go down into the edge near my target leg and I'm going to have my slip knot on here. I'm being distracted by the cat. Peanut is not helping. Spoiled rotten. Spoiled rotten cat. And we're just going to draw up a loop. Okay. And we're going to go along. I'm not a crocheteist. You can tell that. Peanut's not helping. And we're going to insert the crochet hook into the left leg of that gray stitch and the right leg of my target. Okay, and then draw up a loop and draw that into the loop I started with. Okay, again into the left leg of the gray and, or sorry, the right leg of the gray column and the left leg of my target steaking stitch. Draw that loop through and through again. We're just going to go down the whole way this way. Okay, the camera is shaking because the cat is rubbing his face on it. Okay, buddy, you need to go on. Okay, so we're just going to continue drawing, the, drawing that up, doing that slip stitch all the way down. Okay, underneath both of those legs, slip stitch all the way down. This is very awkward for me. I am not good at crochet, nor do I pretend to be, but I just want to be able to show you the idea of what we're doing here. And again, if you want to see a video without feline interference, go and watch the sticking video I put up a couple of weeks ago that shows the crochet reinforcement with a contrasting color yarn as well. Okay, the other thing I want to point out here is I'm headed up into this blank section where I don't have a contrasting color right in the center column. So one thing you can do is put a marker, you know, put those pear-shaped markers on here so you make sure that you maintain this line that you have and that you don't, you know, get off course. So just make absolutely sure that you're bending your fabric and picking up the correct legs of the column that you want, especially in this section that is plain. Okay, I finished the crocheted reinforcement up one side. 
and you can see this is my target stitch and you can see that when I've done that through the crochet chain through the right leg of the white stitch and the left leg of the center target stitch that it pulls it pulls that center stitch to the left. And when I do it on the right, it'll separate it and pull it to the right. It'll want to fold over to the right. When I got to the end, I just uh, drew drew in the, the last tail and tied a little knot there. So, right. Okay, so now I'm going to start at the top and I'm going to do the exact same thing and go back down. So I'll do that and then I'll show you what it looks like and then we will cut. Okay, now that I'm finished doing the crocheted reinforcement, I'm just going to go and check that... I haven't accidentally crocheted anything I shouldn't have. So what, what you want it to look like is to have this reinforcement on either side and have the center be able to pull that apart and see your crochet there and there because we're going to cut the horizontal bar that's between. Okay, hopefully you can see that right there. And we just want to make sure that we're not going to be cutting our gray reinforcement. All right. The time has come. Okay, I like these little tiny pointy scissors that are very sharp. And I'm just going to go right in between. And I'm going to cut my bind off. So you, you do need to cut through your edge right there. And then you want to pull this apart ever so gently and make sure, again, make sure you're only cutting these tiny, tiny little horizontal threads in between. So not your crocheted edge. And we're just gonna take our time and be careful and go all the way up very carefully. You'll see people being more bold than I am. I just like to take my time and snip a little at a time and make sure that I'm not cutting anything I shouldn't be. Oh, I missed a little strand right there because you are cutting through your floats as well. So just make sure you get all the way through them. You can see our edge here with the crocheted reinforcement. All right, I'm just going to continue on all the way up. All right, as I finish up, I'm just going to go ahead and snip through my bind off edge and we've done it. Okay, not as bad as you thought, huh? Okay, now that we've finished cutting this apart, we're going to pick up the stitches along the left-hand side of our sweater and knit the button band. So what I'm going to do here is begin with this ribbing right up here in the top corner. And I'm just going to start picking up stitches with the same size needle and the same color yarn that we did the ribbing for, for the neckline, the cuffs, and the waist. So I'm just going to go in here. As the pattern suggests, I'm going to pick up two out of every three-ish stitches, and we want to make sure that we have a multiple of four plus two, because we start with a knit, and we're going to end with knit two. So we want knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, all the way down, and then we're going to end with a knit two. So that's why it's a multiple of four plus two. Hopefully that makes sense. So I'm just going to go in under each one of these edges and pick up. So there's two, I'll skip one. And I'm just going to go and pick up two, skip one, pick up two, skip one, all the way down. And we will secure this. I just started. We'll secure this in by weaving it in after we do the ribbing. Okay. So you'll see how I'm going to kind of deal with this uh, jutting, jutting out thing here in a moment. So, But I'm just going to carry on picking up the edge of this previous neckline ribbing. I'm just going to get two, skip one. And as we get down here where this, this our, our edge is, I'm going to choose to go in. I'm going to go in right here in between these two stitches. So let me get my other needle so you can see, and I'll zoom in just a bit here so you can see what I'm talking about. So here's our crochet chain edge, and here's our next full stitch. I'm gonna go in between right there when I'm picking up. So I'm not pulling on this stitch. I'm not gonna pull on this, the other leg. I'm gonna pick up right in between 
these columns of stitches. So this is a full stitch. I'm going to pick up between here. So I'll show you what that's going to look like. So I've picked up two and now I'm going to skip one and I'm just going to go in right here under this first edge, this in between here. And you can see the horizontal bars. And I'm just drawing up my knit loop between those horizontal bars between the columns. Okay, so there's one I'm going to skip this hole. Let me get down here and point a little bit differently so you can see. Okay, so there's the bar between the stitch. I'm going to skip this hole and I'm going to go in the next one right there. So you can see the bar. You can see it, I'm sure, better than you can on screen, on camera. So I'm going to go in between right there and pick that up. And I'm going to go right down in between the next one and pick up a loop there. Okay, there's two. Now I'll skip one. Okay, I'm going to skip this next, skip this next one right here and I'm going to go in right there. Okay. And all of this is going to cause, as we knit the ribbing, all this is going to cause this to flip back. You can always cover this with some ribbon too if you like later on. Go down between and pick up another, whoops, there we go, okay, okay, there's two more, now I'll skip this one and go to the next right there, okay, there's one, two, I'll skip the next. Okay, hopefully that's starting to make sense where I'm where I'm poking my needle down through. Use this to point with. So I'm gonna okay, I just did that one. I'm gonna skip here and I'm gonna go down right there. So actually I was wrong. You can see that maroon colored stitch, the bar in front of the stitch I just picked up. So I'm gonna skip the hole right next to that. I'm gonna skip this one and I'm gonna go in right there. Okay, and I'll do another two stitches and then I'll skip one. So I'm not counting just yet. I'm gonna get down here a ways and I'll get, get a ways on down, you know, towards the end down here and then I'll worry about my multiple and how I'm gonna adjust for that. Whether I need to pick up an extra or maybe skip an extra hole, we'll see how, how it's gonna go and how things are gonna work out. Okay, so I've picked up everything all the way down. I did a similar situation here where I just made sure it was on my line and this little jog will just tuck in and roll over. So I have a total of 106, which is a multiple of four plus two. And now I'm just gonna begin my ribbing and I'm gonna begin on the wrong side here. So I'm gonna start with a purl two so that it ends up as a knit two on the right side. Okay, I've knitted the button band on this side first and I've chosen how the width of that um, roughly four centimeters as called for in the pattern. Then what we did is I bound off in pattern, just the regular standard bind off in pattern. And then what my daughter and I did was um, chose some buttons that we hope will work. They might be a little bit small. So we're gonna have to wait and see if the buttons will work with the size of the button hole that we're gonna knit on this side. I still have the needles on this side. So what we've done is place the buttons and then I put these pins in where she wanted the buttons to be. So you can see that's every so often. She didn't feel the need to have one right at the very top. You might choose to do that. Um, so what I'm doing now is I want to make sure that the ribbing matches up. I picked up the button band on this side the exact same way that I did and I made sure I had the same number of stitches on this side. So that's important because when we have the buttons on here and we go to overlap it, we want the ribbing to match up, right? So she wants to have her, my daughter wants her first button to be in this ditch right here where these purl stitches are. So that's going to be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11, and 12. So those button, the button hole that I'm going to create needs to be using stitches 11 and 12 so that the button hole will correspond exactly to the right area. Okay, Hope that makes sense. So we have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. So my buttonhole is going to be here. So I picked up these in the same way that I did. I have the same number of stitches. So we're about to start the row number four in the pattern where it shows 
that we're going to be knitting on the wrong side. Disregard that. That's just my crocheted reinforcement. And I'm going to be knitting, creating the buttonhole on stitches 11 and 12. Now that's what I've chosen. You'll need to lay yours out and see what corresponds for you. Um, obviously this button bed hasn't been steam blocked yet. So you're just going to have to make, you know, line things up. And this is a little stretched apart because it's on the needles. So you see what I'm saying? You just want to count and make sure that you are creating the buttonhole in the same spot where your pins are. So hopefully that makes sense. Okay. So we have, I'm beginning row five of this button band, which is in the on the wrong side. Okay, let me zoom in here and move some of this away so that you can see. And I'm just gonna continue in my established ribbing until I get to the stitches where I want to create that buttonhole. Okay, if you read the instructions for creating the buttonhole, I need to uh, go ahead and work these two stitches, which for me is stitches nine and 10. And then these are the two I'm going to use for the buttonhole. We're slipping these over purlwise to the right hand needle. I'm, this is where the asterisk is in that button band paragraph. And I'm going to pass the slip stitch over the first. So I'm going to take this one and pass it over the first one. Okay. Then I'm going to slip one more onto the right needle and then I'm going to pass this one over the top. So I've bound off. Basically what I've done here is bound off two stitches. Then I'm going to take this one back to the left needle and I'm casting on two stitches with the backwards loop. So again, you're just going to have your yarn going up and over, turn your finger over and slide that on there so that your working yarn comes out the bottom of the loop and that binds it on there. Okay. Do that again. All right. Then I'm going to continue working in pattern until I get to the spot where I want my next buttonhole to be. All right, so you can tell this will be a purl because this is the purl side. So I'm bringing my yarn forward and I'm gonna knit to the next part and I'll show you all of this all over again. Now I'm using the backward cast on as indicated in the pattern, but you could certainly do a cable cast on that might be a little bit sturdier, um, but it's gonna be fine either way because we're gonna continue knitting another four rows of ribbing or three or four rows of ribbing uh, whatever you did to match the other side. Okay, I've knitted now, I've knitted from the buttonhole that we made, I've knitted the prescribed number of stitches um, over to where I want to make that again. And I double checked it actually, I laid this back down on the needle and I counted and I double checked, you know, the number of stitches between this pin and this pin so that I know exactly where I want to make my next buttonhole. So the next thing I'm going to do then is slip both stitches purlwise over to the right hand side, slip the first one over as if you're binding it off, slip the next stitch to the right hand needle and slip that over as well. Then we're going to slip that one back to the left and then we're going to do a backwards loop cast on two times, two stitches there and then just continue working in pattern. Bringing the yarn to the front because now these are purls, for me they are. They may be for you too, depending on how you've spaced your buttonholes. And I'm gonna to knit to the next buttonhole, being sure where it occurs. And just continue that all the way down. Okay, I'll show you this one last time. Since the first time I showed you, I was kind of off camera and not centered as well, so I apologize for that. So I'm gonna slip two stitches over to the right, pass the slip stitch first one over the second, just as if you're binding off slip another one and pass the second one over. So basically we've bound off two stitches, take this one back to the left needle, since we still have to work it, cast on two, and then continue knitting in pattern. All right, carry on with making all of those buttonholes, being sure to match them up. Mine are every 10 stitches is when I start. So, and I'm going to double check that with this right hand side to make sure that my pins are in fact every 10 stitches. That's the way the pattern recommends to do it. Now I am going to show you um, how to make a little bit smaller buttonhole because my daughter has chosen buttons that are a little bit too small for that particular buttonhole that's created when you bind off two stitches. So I'm going to only bind off one stitch instead. So I'm going to go ahead and slip my two stitches over 
as recommended by the pattern. Then I'm gonna go ahead and just bind off this one. Slip it back over to the left, cast on just one stitch with the backwards loop and continue on in pattern. That's gonna create a smaller hole. I think that will fit better with the buttons that she has chosen. So what I'll do is, you know, do a couple of those button holes and then I'll go get, you know, push this down back on the, uh, back on the needle and then see how the buttonhole fits in this hole. Now, worst case scenario, I get all the way down and we start knitting the ribbing back and, and then we check on it and see. Worst case scenario, I end up tinking back a row and a half or something. It's not a big deal. Um, to make sure that the hole is going to fit the buttons that she's chosen. So you may need to fiddle with that a little bit and adjust the size of your buttonhole if you need to, depending on the buttons you choose, or go ahead and knit your sweater and pick out the buttons afterward. Okay, things are looking pretty good here, so now I just need to sew on my buttons. So what I'm going to do now is take my pins and go and locate the buttonholes exactly, make sure my ribbing is all, you know, lined up in sync, like all the knits and pearls line up together where I want to put the buttons and find the buttonhole and just make sure that I know exactly where I'm going to put my button, you know, like right in the center. Or it might be offset a little bit depending on how many rows you chose to do. So I'm just going to go ahead and go through there and mark exactly where I want to sew my buttons and then I'll show you how I'm going to choose to do that. I have some, some tips on sewing buttons. Okay, I am now gonna steam block the ribbing and I have my ironing board set up and I've just, all I've done here is just pinned, pinned it in place so it's straight and I'm gonna take my iron because I don't have one of those steam wand thingies and so this was, uh, I reached out to Anne from I Thought I Knew How and Frost and this is how she did hers and she said it worked great because I don't have, a, normally when I block things, I just soak it, I just get it all wet. So I'm just gonna hold the iron up and do the shoot shoot the steam at it and that's kind of violent <laughs> but I'm holding the oven up or I'm holding the iron above and it's just steaming and relaxing the button band I'm just gonna do that a few times you can see my iron ironing boards a little worse for wear but I'm just doing that a few times and then I'll let it dry and relax Okay, I'm gonna show you how I like to sew on the buttons and I'm gonna use my main button here. And you can tell mine are a little bit smaller, which is why I chose to only do the one hole or one stitch buttonhole. Um, and then I'm also gonna do a backer button. Now I know these are not the same color, but that's okay. Um, my backer buttons are a little bit smaller than my main button. Um, and the reason that I like to use a backer button, this was first suggested to me by one of my patrons. Shout out to Lynn, thanks for the great idea. Um, the reason you want a backer button, if I were to if I were to sew this directly on here with like regular cotton sewing thread, um, over time the cotton thread can actually cut through the wool as it pulls on it, so you don't want to do that. Um, and the other thing that a lot of people, well, I shouldn't say a lot, but sometimes people want to use a ply or a strand of the wool to sew on the buttons. But the only thing about that is wool tends to stretch. So after a while, then your buttons are going to be kind of dangly and hanging off there. So I am going to use um, cotton sewing thread. So I'm just going to pull off 16 inches or so, and I'm going to double it back on itself. And tie an overhand knot on the ends. So I know this is like tiny and you probably can't see it with this background. So let me move this aside so maybe you can see what I'm doing here. The better background. Okay, so I'm just gonna go to the end here and I'm, I've just doubled this over and I'm gonna tie an overhand knot on the end. You know, it's okay if it's an inch or so away from the end, it's not a big deal. I'm just gonna tie an overhand knot and then I'm gonna put my needle on this end where the knot is. And I know that seems kind of unconventional, but you're gonna see why in just a minute. Okay, so I'm gonna double this over and thread my needle. If I can do this on camera with my progressive lenses, probably, no, oh, I did it, okay, good. Now my knot gets hung up right there, but that's totally okay. 
So this is the end that I have the knot near the needle. And I have the doubled over section here. And I'll show you why. So I'm gonna take my backer button and I'm gonna thread my needle through the backer button, draw it up through, not all the way. I want to leave a little bit where the loop is here, okay? Now I'm gonna take the needle and go through the other hole and through this loop. Because what's gonna happen is that's how I'm going to secure the backer button, okay? Does that make sense? So that way, I've already got it secured. I don't have to figure out how I'm gonna tie that on or how I'm gonna get things started. So then I'm gonna go ahead and begin with the placement of this. And I have done a couple already, so I have an idea of where I want this to be. And I'm gonna just go ahead and come right up through there. And as I draw that up, there's my backer button already in place. Then I'm gonna choose, for me, I'm gonna choose the upper right-hand corner of my, I have four, I have four holes on this button. Probably wasn't a good idea to choose to film this in black for you, um, but you'll get the idea. So I know that that's gonna be, the, the upper right-hand corner is how I'm gonna place that. And I'm just gonna, you know, go diagonally down through and I'm, I'm holding together the backer button and the front one like a sandwich. And I'll go down through and I'm gonna aim for the one of the holes on the back button. So you can see how that's gonna work. And I'm just gonna sew that on and go up and down and crisscross, you know, from the holes on the top. Now normally I don't have a, you know, a button on the front that has four holes and one on the back that only has two, but that's just how it worked out this time because um, we couldn't decide what buttons to use and it's what we had. Okay, so you go ahead and carry on with sewing your button on. And since I was talking, I came up through, I missed the hole on my backer button. So go ahead and keep sewing that on and I'll show you how I'm gonna fasten this off. It's a pretty ingenious way to fasten it off that I learned from, actually this whole button sewing method I learned from Suzanne Bryan on her knitting channel. So check out hers channel if you have a chance. She's pretty brilliant. And the way that she fastens off her buttons is pretty ingenious and handy and secure. So. Okay, in order to secure this button now, what I need to do is go down through the hole, but not all the way through, not all the way through to the other side. I need to go down in here and then come out in the middle. So this is, can be kind of fiddly depending on the, how far the hole is away from the edge. So you kind of have to maneuver it because I want to have my needle come out in between like this. So without hopefully catching any strands of my sweater. So. I did, I did catch a couple right there, but it's really fiddly and I'm not gonna worry too much about it. So I have that coming out. There we go. You want your yarn to come out of the middle of the button sandwich. All right, now we're gonna do a couple of half hitches. And if you don't know what that means, it's just a wrap around, but it cinches back on itself. So I'm gonna wrap this around my finger and I'm gonna wrap the yarn around the button. And then when I, then I'm gonna take the needle and go through the loop that was on my finger and you can see it's kind of making a knot and I'm just gonna tighten that up. So what that does is it brings the strands together and kind of creates a post in between your, in the middle layer of your button sandwich. So I'm gonna do that again, go around my finger and I'm gonna wrap the, th the thread around the button and then take the needle through the loop and pull that tight. Okay, see how that's gonna do? All right, so do that two or three times and then then what I'm gonna do is take my needle through the center post. You can feel that in there. And I'm gonna take my needle through that without poking myself. And then that's secure. I'm just gonna pull that all the way through. Okay. Pull that through and then you've got three good wraps or even four. I don't need more than that. And then I'm just gonna carefully trim right up next to the button. Okay, being careful not to trim any of your yarn, obviously. Okay, and that's really solid. I mean, that's, that's on there. Okay, all right, I hope that helps.
I hope you've enjoyed this knit along as much as I have and found value with these tutorials. If so, consider subscribing, hit the thumbs up, the like button, all that. I would love to see your finished cardigan, so leave me a picture over in the Facebook or Ravelry groups, particularly on Finished Object Friday. I'd love to see them. Thanks so much for watching.